Hi, my name's Barney and I'm an ecologist at the Donkey Sanctuary and I'd like to talk to you about grasses. Grasses are extremely important. They provide habitat and shelter to all sorts of wildlife and invertebrates. They also provide the food and nutrition for the animals that graze upon it. So what I'd like to do in this video is just introduce you to some of the key species of grasses that you're likely to find around Buckfastley and how to identify them and also have a quick look at some of the grassland communities as well and talk about how they're managed and why they're important. Well, first off, they're absolutely everywhere. They're in our verges, they're in our churchyards, they're growing in our pavements, they're in our hedgerows, our woodlands, and our fields, of course. As I mentioned before, they provide food and shelter to all sorts of animals, and they provide the nutrition and food to a lot of the animals grazing upon it. And as an ecologist, grasses are really important indicators. They can tell me whether a piece of land is dry, wet, whether it's full of nutrients, and potentially even information about the historical management of that land as well. And I think grasses are really beautiful as well. These are just five or six species that I found growing in St Luke's churchyard in Buckfast Lee. These are actually the flowers here. And unlike wildflowers which use colour and scent to attract insects for pollination, grasses are actually wind pollinated. So their mechanism for um, reproducing is to actually produce huge amounts of very light pollen which can be carried by the wind. Okay so we're going to start here on the corner of Silver Street, we're about 20 seconds away from my house, you really don't have to go very far to, to find grasses. Now this is a really nutrient rich bank, um, we're underneath a tree here and the grass uh, hasn't been cut at all, you can see um, a, a thatch of grass underneath. Um, so this isn't very good for, for wildflowers because the coarse grasses are thriving in the nutrient rich environment. But it is a really good environment for, for voles and other small mammals. So different grasslands um, have different benefits. Okay, so there are at least two species here that are acting as indicator species. So they're telling me um, that this is nutrient rich ground. The first one is called coxfoot, named because the flower um, resembles the foot of a chicken. It's a very distinctive grass. Um, it's very bulky, very big, and it also has this kind of grey, bluey colour to it. Um, other means of identifying it without the flower are, if you look at the base of the, of the grass, it's actually very flattened, which is really unusual amongst grasses. It all has, also has a really big jagged ligule. Now the ligule is a really important feature for identifying grasses with. It's a membrane that sits between the leaf and the stalk so look out for a very big jagged ligule. The second of these species is called false oat grass and it's named because the flower does resemble oats. You can see these long awns that project from the flowers of the grass. We have a number of different oat grasses in the country but false oat grass is the largest species. It can also be identified by looking at the roots, which are often a reddy orange colour. And there are swollen nodes along the stem of the grass that you can look for as well. The grass initially grows horizontally and then diagonally and then straight up. So if you look at the base of the plant, it almost has an L shape to it. Next, I've moved to a small patch on the corner of Holm Road. And this really is a, a classic amenity verge. There aren't really many species growing here, there's some meadow and bulbous buttercup, but it's mainly full of dense coarse grasses. Um, there are a couple new species here that I'd like to introduce you to. The first is called rough meadow grass and this has an inflorescence or a flower that's made up of very many very small spikelets so this gives the flower a very feathery fine look. It can be confused with another genus of grasses called the agrostis or bents, but you identify the meadow grasses by looking at the end of the leaves and you can see they form this boat keel shape rather than a spear shape. 
this species here is rough meadow grass rather than smooth meadow grass because the stem has a rough feel to it and also it has a really large ligule um, like uh, coxfoot that we looked at earlier. This verge is also full of perennial ryegrass. Now this species has been bred to be resilient and is used extensively in our lawns and the fields around us. So when you see a bright green field in the countryside, it's probably full of perennial ryegrass. To me it almost looks like it's made of plastic. It's this bright green colour and it's very shiny to look at as well. But to confirm the ID you can look at the roots which are often stained red. Perennial ryegrass also has a structure known as an oracle. This is where the base of the leaf of the grass um, wraps around and hugs the stem of the grass. Unfortunately, most of the fields across Devon and the UK are full of dense coarse grass or perennial ryegrass. Perennial ryegrass in particular offers very little wildlife value and tends to be sugar rich, so it's not providing a good mix of nutrients for our grazing animals. Increasing the diversity of these grasslands would both help wildlife and be better for our animals, and it would also offer those grasslands more resilience in the face of a changing climate. I'm now in St Luke's churchyard. So this area here is now being managed for wildflowers. And the way they're doing that is they're resting the ground during the summer to let the wildflowers grow. But then they're cutting and raking the ground in the spring and the autumn. And what that does is over time it reduces the amount of mulch and nutrients that are in the ground. So it gives more space and room for wildflowers. Now already I can see there are some species of grasses here growing that I haven't seen in some of the other sites we've looked at. And also the density of the grasses has been reduced. So there's just more space within the sward for different flowers to grow. There are a couple species of grasses I'd like to just quickly introduce you to. The first one is called red fescue. Now the fescues are, are really easy to identify in most cases because they have needle-like leaves so they're very fine grasses. If you look at the flower or the inflorescence of the grass it's made up of, of pointy um, spikelets. And finally I'd like to introduce you to um, sweet vernal grass. Um, sweet vernal grass is one of the earliest flowering grasses here in the UK. It's got a very distinctive pointy inflorescence and it's identifiable because the oracle, so the point at which the blade of the grass meets the stem, has a line of hairs across it, which is, which is quite unusual. Sweet vernal grass also contains a component called cumarin, um, which is quite almondy, but actually it's the smell that's given off when hay is cut. So I've come back down now to the the verge, the main verge in Buckfastley, in the centre of Buckfastley on Holm Road. Um, and this habitat provides another example where we have a lot, um, a lot less grass and a lot finer grasses. So there's a lot more of the, the fescues with the fin needles and a lot less of those coarse grasses that we looked at originally, such as um, soft brome and coxfoot. And what that means is there's more room here for the wildflowers to grow. Part of that will be down to the way that these verges are managed. And also part of that will be due to the fact that these verges are located on, on limestone rocks. So that will favour um, some of those finer grasses over the coarser ones. So in conclusion, we've looked at some of the main grass species around Buckfastley. And we've also looked at some of the main grass communities as well. We started by looking at nutrient rich grasslands that were dominated by coxfoot and perennial ryegrass. And then we moved to the churchyard, which was being managed for wildflowers. And we saw species like red fescue. Now these species have fine needle like leaves. So what that means is there's more space in the sward for wildflowers to grow in. And the exciting thing is to increase the diversity of our grasslands really doesn't take very much work at all. Simply grazing and cutting at the right time of year is all that's needed. And just imagine if we could scale that up across the UK as well and turn our green and pleasant land into one that's actually really colourful and great for wildlife.